Let's bring up this live shot we're seeing uh, at the moment coming through to us. This is a very rare event. The lucky people in Exmouth, some 20,000 people have descended on that town to, to see it. They're going to be plunged into darkness for about 59 seconds. Usually that town only has around 2,000 people in it. It is a very small, uh, one main street kind of town. So there really has been a huge influx of people there. Eclipse chasers from all around the world have made their way to that tiny town in northern WA to check this out. And around the rest of the country, we're all pretty keen to see these shots as well. It looks like it's getting pretty close here. It's um, remarkable to, to watch these live pictures coming into us. Let's bring you some more analysis of what is actually happening here. John Latanzio is with us. John, you're the president of the Astronomical Society of Australia. So you know a bit about what's about to happen. Talk us through it. What's actually happening in the skies here? And just how rare is it that we get to witness this sort of event? Well, very lucky that the sun is 400 times bigger than the moon, but it's 400 times further away. So the moon can, uh, at, at certain parts in its orbit, can almost completely block the sun. And that's what we're seeing. Uh, the moon is just passing, uh, orbiting the earth, the earth's orbiting the sun, and the moon is passing between us and the sun. And it's that, uh, because they're elliptical orbits, they're not exactly circular. So sometimes they're further away, sometimes they're closer. And the combination of all of these things means that sometimes we get to see an eclipse where the entire sun is covered by the moon. And that's, that's about to happen now. Um, and uh, the, the beauty of this is that it blocks out all of the bright light coming from the sun. And so we can see the outer part of the sun, what's called the corona or its crown, which is usually very faint. Now it's very, very low density gas. Uh, and we should be able to see it. We can also, I can see a, a prominence over there on the left, about halfway down, uh, red prominence sticking out at the moment. It's uh, that it should become even more visible when the very last of the light disappears. Sorry, just explain to us that, that that bit of red that we can see on the screen there. What is that prominence? What's what's happening there? Uh, that's a, that's a, a gas, ionised gas in the sun that's um, following a magnetic field. The sun has very strong magnetic fields, and the gas is ionised, so it's had the uh, its electrons knocked off it, and so it's moving around. There you go. It's it's following the magnetic field, and so that they get these prominences. They can be very large, and that now is the corona. The, uh, the part of the sky, the star, the sun that you can normally not see because the sun's so bright. And that's a very low density gas at about a million degrees. And you can see a couple of prominences sticking off on the, it's now on the top right, halfway around there. Um, as I say, now it's on the bottom left, obviously changing the orientation. But that's uh, uh, gas from the sun, but that's constrained to move along magnetic fields that are anchored in the in the sun's photosphere, the part of the sun where all of the light comes from. And this magnificent wispy uh, image that you're seeing now, that's the, the corona, which is, as I say, it's very low density gas, but it's very hot. The surface of the sun's about 6,000 degrees and the corona is about a million degrees. And uh, that's it's normally barely visible. Okay, so it's starting to end now, you're seeing what's called Bailey's beads as the light starts to come through some of the canyons on the moon. Um, and then you get, but it's also called a diamond ring effect because it can look a little bit like a diamond ring. There it was there before the brightness was turned down. And, uh, and so you should be looking away from the sun now. So I think the 59 seconds looks like it's over. Short and sweet, but what remarkable pictures coming through to us. What yes. a privilege to be able to witness these with the help of the, the Perth Observatory. It is just brilliant to see some amazing pictures there, John. We really appreciate you talking us through what's happening. So as, as we were expecting, about 59 seconds there, and at that point, Exmouth, the town, would have been plunged into total darkness. What, around, what about the rest of the country? If people are outside now, I don't really want to encourage people to switch off their TVs at this point, but if they are, they are out and about, can they notice any sort of dimness in the sky at well, this point? It depends exactly where you are. The closer you are to Exmouth, the, uh, the, the more of the sun will be blocked out by the moon. Um, I'm down in Melbourne where I'm only going to get about 10% blocked out 
And uh, so that's barely going to be noticeable. It's just decreasing the light by, by 10%. Um, but some places will see a lot more than others. Um, uh, I believe it's only when you get to about 80% blocked that you might actually notice it um, without uh, you know, expecting it and looking for it. But we're, we're actually very lucky. There's going to be another, uh, there's a sort of eclipse, there's a couple of eclipses a year on average, but they only get to one particular place on the Earth about every 800 years, I think. Uh, but Australia is going to have another four in the next 15 years. And the, the next one is 2028, and it passes right over the middle of Sydney. And the totality, the phase there where you can see the corona, that will last three and three quarter minutes, not 59 seconds. So that will be a, uh, a, a very spectacular event. That's 2028. 